Good evening, everyone. What a glorious day. And if you would, would you all mind standing for prayer, please? Lord, we are so grateful because of this beautiful day in this beautiful city with all of these people who have beautiful hearts and are loved deeply by you. We are thank you, thankful, Lord, for the opportunity to celebrate our city, our friendship. And Lord, as far as we've come and so far that we have to go, we know that you're going with us. So thank you for our community. We pray blessing upon this community and thankful for every hand that served us, that leads us, that protects us. And have your way tonight, we pray in Christ's name. And everyone said, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, it's my honor and privilege to introduce to you uh, someone who last year gave a famous speech at this very same rally, and I'm going to introduce to you Mayor Matekis to come at this time. God bless you, Mayor. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening, Alan Parkers. If you can hear me in the back, would you uh, raise your hands, please? And if you don't want to hear me in the back, raise your hands. Okay. <laughs> Just one councilman. Um, thank you for coming out tonight and sharing your continued support for our city. The second walk is a celebration of our city's resiliency and our belief in this city as the place where we want to live, work, play, and raise our families. Before we start tonight's program, I want to thank the committee for putting this event together, and particularly Father Malia and Reverend Blakey for their participation and leadership. A few other how yeah. A few uh, housekeeping announcements, although I think some are unnecessary, as someone's people have managed to find all of the uh, food and desserts, but. Um, Anyone needing to go back to their car at the Presbyterian Church, we have the smart bus back over here. They will be taking you back when you want to leave, so uh, please avail yourself of that as that's, that's what you want to do. Uh, the food and refreshments are around the corner and in the activities building, and the desserts are to be served after our program tonight, but I think some people have found the doors open, and that's fine. Also, I want to remind you that the street fair is coming August 1st and 2nd. And if you noticed, if you were on our walk tonight, there was the CERT team, which is the uh, community emergency response team, which the city of Melvindale's police force and Lieutenant uh, Egan of our police force have trained to help us with uh, events like this, to provide additional uh, security along the way. And they've done a great job. Um, they are a volunteer organization. They have no uh, monetary support from the city. And tomorrow night is their uh, fundraiser at the Knights of Columbus uh, uh, Hall. They're having a Mustacholi uh, dinner fundraiser. Unfortunately, I don't have the starting time for that, but I'm sure uh, we'll get it before the end of the evening is over. This year has shown tremendous progress. Our volunteers at all levels, city commissioners, the social media group, particularly the Alan Parker, and, th and those individuals who came forward for specific tasks to help improve the city's appearance and its operation. We have new department heads in assessing Department of Public Service and the Parks and Recreation. And each of these three men have shown remarkable enthusiasm, new ideas, as well as being very experienced for the positions that they were chosen for. A visionary process was presented by the ad hoc committee of the city, appointed by our emergency manager. Well over 100 residents participated in its process, and the results have been to identify new directions to meet our residents' needs, hopes, and expectations. Ms. Parker, our emergency manager with council support, has sent three years of balanced budgets to the state for its approval. And last August, you citizens voted overwhelmingly by a 70 to 30% margin to increase millage to support our police and fire. All of these things have greatly improved our financial stability. The emergency manager, again with council support, 
has entered into a sale for the Southfield lease property. And this sale upon completion will greatly reduce the strain on our city's general operating budget. And the proceeds of sale will be used exclusively to retire the bonds that were issued to buy that property, further helping our budget. Tonight's food and beverages, I just want to mention all those people who have donated because this all is being done uh, by donations. Baker College, Meyer, Chris Richards of Little Caesars, the Chaptwala family of McDonald's, Ken Busilli for our banner, the CERT team, who I've mentioned earlier, who protected us on our walk, the High School Intertac Club, who is over serving hot dogs and food, and the wonderful dessert by individuals uh, who prepared it in our city. Uh, Mike Bodell, a former councilman, is providing our sound system and will provide music for our enjoyment. And they're all the Allen Park businesses, churches, and individuals pitching in to make us a better place at this event possible. Over the next few minutes, you will hear from a number of speakers and their thoughts about our city. Each of us, as a speaker, will introduce the speaker that follows us, which hopefully will uh, speed up the program and give us more time uh, to visit and to eat. So spend some time here tonight, make some new acquaintances and renew old friendships. And it's now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, a longtime friend and advisor, the Reverend Doug Blakey, pastor of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. He and Father Joe started this walk last year, and here's Doug. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. You know, as I began the walk this year, I couldn't help but notice as we walked down Park Street how beautiful Allen Park was. Trees are gorgeous, and, and it just was a, a beautiful walk. You know, but that's not the only reason why I love Allen Park. You know, a city's not just about its beautiful trees or its parks or its roads or its sidewalks. What makes a community a beautiful community a great community are the people of Allen Park. It's the people of Allen Park that I've had the pleasure of spending the last, oh, I'm on my 15th year now. It's here that I raised my three boys. It's here I've had an opportunity to volunteer. I have to tell you that I am very proud to call myself a citizen of Allen Park. And as a citizen of Allen Park, I want to say tonight that I think this is a very, very important time in our history. I'm so glad of the beginnings that the, the mayor delineated in his, in his words with us. But this is still a time of adversity in some ways, a time when we're struggling, a time where not everything is answered. And I got to tell you, the character of a city is determined not in its good times, but what it does in times of adversity, where things aren't always great and easy. You know, in times like that, it is so easy to build walls. It's so easy to point fingers at other people. It's so easy to, to blame somebody, to say you're not gonna get involved, to say, oh, I'm too angry, the heck with it. That's the easy choice. We cannot make that choice as citizens of Allen Park. The better choice, the harder choice, is to come together united as a community, to say, I am gonna work for this town that I love. I am gonna make a difference. I am gonna educate myself on the issues. I, in every way I can, am gonna be a good citizen of this community to the best of my ability. It's my fervent hope and prayer that when the history of Allen Park is written down generations from now, that they'll look back at us and say in a difficult time, the citizens of Allen Park came together, overcame all its struggles and became a deeper, better, more loving community. And so, as an old bald pastor, I'm losing weight, but I'm still overweight. I challenge you, volunteer, 
volunteer at your school, do something good for Allen Park this year. Why don't you start a block party? If you get mad at an issue, why don't you go make an appointment with the mayor or, this, or, 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 or a council person? And you know what you'll discover? You may not agree with everything they say, but you'll discover they care just as much about Allen Park as you do. Try this year to make a difference. And above all, and I'm not ashamed to say it, it's my line of work, no matter what creed you affirm, pray for our great community. Thank you for listening to me. I got carried away. It's my honor to introduce someone I deeply respect. I think Alan Park won the lottery when Joyce Parker was appointed our emergency manager. I think she's demonstrated that she cares about this community. We couldn't have had this walk last year without her. And I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to introduce her today. Ms. Parker. Uh, thank you, uh, Reverend Blakey. Uh, good evening to all of Allen Park. First of all, I'd like to um, thank all of you for coming out to participate in our second annual United for Allen Park Walk and Rally. I also would like to thank the City Council for sponsoring a resolution making this day an annual recognition for the community. We also had uh, a committee that was involved with coordinating the event this year. And I'd like to thank uh, members of the committee um, the, the committee was basically co-chaired by Councilman Sisko and our city administrator, Karen Folks. And thank you for the work that you've done with coordinating the event this year. Now, last year this time, the city was in the early stages of making changes to correct its financial stress in order to eliminate a cumulative deficit in an estimated amount of $1 million and a structural deficit in the amount of $4 million. Since that time, we as an organization and a community have made several changes to close the gap in the city's finances and changes with service delivery. I know it might be tough for me to discuss all of the changes with the time allocated, but what I'd like to do is touch on some of the highlights of our accomplishments since last year. First, the city received administrative fees uh, related to licenses and permits, and by doing so, revenue increased by $110,000. Alan Parkers came out to vote last year and approved an additional millage of 3.25 mills to support police and fire services. The increase in the millage resulted in additional revenue of $2 million. And again, I'd like to thank the community for your support. Now, given limited resources for operational expenses, our staff is now aggressive with finding additional resources to support service delivery. Since last year, the city received approximately $4 million in grant funding to support city services. The city made a number of reductions also in operational expenses, and they are as follows. We made reductions in the governing body's pay. We made salary reductions of 10% for employees, which total about $381,000. We now have an 80-20 cost sharing of health insurance for employees with savings of $500,000. We have reductions related to holiday and vacation pay that total $50,000 in savings. We eliminated various vacant positions uh, totaling $722,000. We reorganized our assessing department saving $35,000. We also had uh, reductions in overtime, which was about $140,000. We had reduction in pension costs by $1.2 million. 
We had reductions in retiree health care costs by $600,000 and reduction in our OPEB liability by $50 million. We also had reduction in expenses for liability insurance by $100,000 and reduction in insurance dependent care costs by $40,000. Based on the changes that have taken place related to revenue enhancements and expenditure reductions, we are projecting a surplus for our last fiscal year ending June 30th, 2014, which means the city will no longer be in a deficit position. This, cost, this could not have taken place without your support and involvement. And again, I'd like to thank all of you for having the confidence in the city by giving us an opportunity to turn things around. In addition to the good news related to the city's budget, we also have four other positive items to share with you this evening. One, we have regained control of operation of our community center and we are now making the changes and the repairs necessary to operate our facility in the best way possible. As stated earlier, we recently hired new staff. We now have a new Parks and Recreation Director. His name is Patrick Hawkins and Mr. Hawkins, can you just stand and be recognized for a moment? Uh, Mr. Hawkins has a great background with overseeing parks and recreation facilities in other cities in Michigan, and he's doing a great job here in Allen Park. We now have the Southfield lease properties under control, under contract for the sale of the property. The city went out for proposals and received three proposals for the sale of the property. A decision was made to enter into a purchase agreement in the amount of $12 million with Time Equities, which is a New York company. The company is an investment group and also have other holdings within the state of Michigan. Right now, Time Equities is conducting their due diligence and if they are satisfied with the outcome of the due diligence, the city and Time Equities will close on the sale of the property. We are currently exploring four options to relocate City Hall. Now the city has also requested proposals to sell the property for redevelopment at the current location. We would like to hear from all of you in reference to the four options and the information is on our website. So go on the website and take a look at the options and I certainly would welcome your input before making a final decision. And so we're getting pretty close to making a decision, so I would ask that you do it as soon as possible. And then number four is in reference to the Allen Park Advisory Committee. Uh, the committee has been actively engaged in the community to develop a visioning and strategic plan for the city. After several community meetings, a draft plan is ready to be presented and reviewed with the city council and with the community. And I'd like to acknowledge and take this opportunity to thank the Allen Park Advisory Committee for all of their hard work in putting together the proposed plan. And if there are members here, could you just stand up and raise your hand? In closing, I'd like to also state that my work in Allen Park is almost over and I will be transitioning out of the city within months. I personally would like to thank all of you for your support, your patience and understanding of the work that was required in order to get us at this point today. I think that as a community united, we have been able to make major progress. It is not me, it is not the city council, it is everyone working together to make a difference. As we move forward, 
instead of backwards to get from the Allen Park Presbyterian Church to Cabrini, I am forward along with you. Again, invest in your Allen Park. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, who is an Allen Parker, Miss Shirley Potts. I guess I have to make it a little shorter. Good evening, Ellen Parkers. Well, as previously introduced, my name is Shirley Potts. I'm one of the admin from the Facebook group, The Ellen Parker. Uh, about a year ago, we came together to form this group because we wanted something positive for Ellen Park. Together with Sean Margrita and Christopher Frankel, we started a Facebook page called The Ellen Parker. Since then, we've had another admin, and her name is Terry David. We're passionate about our city. We always want a positive outlook. We want to create community spirit and be part of the positive change in, the in this city. It started with a simple model. A gathering place for Ellen Parkers, whether you're from here, enjoy living here, plan on moving here, we welcome you. This is a place we come and share with one another and maintain a level of respect in class. Don't be shy, chime in, tell us what's going on in Allen Park. Please remember that all negativity should be left at the door. Our our passion started out simple. We started out tearing, up, tear, tearing out weeds at a couple of the Allen Park signs and replanting them. That grew to other people in the group who went out, painted, painted signs, pulled weeds, and planted those. On to another member of the group who went out and fixed playground equipment. All of it little stuff, but we all did a part, and we joined together. Without this group, I wouldn't have met nearly half of the people or known. Um, on the Facebook page, we like to share our challenges, as most of you know that are members of it. We like to talk about the future. More importantly, we like to help each other out. The idea of this Facebook page went a lot further than any of us imagined. We found that, if nothing else, Allen Parkers are definitely passionate people who love their city. And while we may not agree on how, we want to, how it gets improved, we all agree that we want it improved. Take, for instance, one of the group who, at Christmas time, went around taking pictures of all the beautifully lighted houses. Posted them on Facebook. We all picked the one we liked the best. She got with one of the businesses in Allen Park. They donated pizzas for the winners. Something small once again, but proving community spirit. We've interacted with the DDA. As Jennifer Kibbe well knows, she probably has gotten much more input than maybe she ever wanted. But the point is, is that it gives people a voice to interact, and we like that. I like that. Having lived in Allen Park for 30 years, I've never met anybody, really. Now I, I feel like I know everybody, through Facebook, that is. More, more importantly, we've found that we all love Allen Park. We are a city of devoted parents, grandparents, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, cousins. We've been able to link with Allen Parkers who no longer live here and giving them a place that they can keep in touch with their hometown. Does the group have its challenges? Absolutely. But I think for the most, most part, the positive message we intended has gotten out there. So if you haven't already done so, join us on Facebook at the Ellen Parker page. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Anthony Cools, who will give you his vision for Ellen Park. Thanks, have a great evening.
Good evening, Alan Park. My name is Tony Cools. I live just a few blocks away down on Park Avenue with my, my wife Lauren and our dog Parker. We named our dog Parker because we live in Allen Park on Park Avenue. <laughs> if someone would have told me three years ago that I'd be speaking here in front of you tonight, I wouldn't have believed him. But I'm somewhat of what you would call a boomerang Allen Parker. I was born here. My parents lived here for eight years. Uh, one of my mother's first jobs was here working at a doctor's office. And I was even baptized right here at St. Francis Cabrini. But I'm not here to just talk about me. I'm here to tell you about what brought me back to Allen Park. The American dream is what brought me back to Allen Park. Three years ago was a great year of opportunity for me. It was a year where I was recently engaged, started a new career, and had the opportunity to buy my first house. And that's what the American dream is all about, is opportunity. You work hard, you get married, you buy a house, you start a family, and then you leave a legacy. The things that brought me back to Allen Park is this great sense of community, things that we all see here tonight, all getting together, walking together, sharing food together. The appeal of our well-managed homes, the schools, our location and proximity to highways, all of our local commerce, within walking distance of most of our houses. So living in Allen Park was the second major commitment and investment that I made in my life, next to marrying my beautiful wife, Lauren. And now my decision has been recently reaffirmed. A recent financial literacy writer, Chip Olson, often featured in the New York Times and Wall Street Journal, found Allen Park to be the 10th best city in Michigan for home ownership. Allen Park was the lone Wayne County city to break that top 10. Not Livonia, not Grozeal, but Allen Park. In the analysis, they found that Allen Park boasts an 87% home ownership rate, a 28% cost over income ratio, and an average home price of near $114,000. So in short, that means that living here is a really good investment. These are all positive things about Allen Park. And when facing reality, Allen Park, like other cities, has been subject to hard economic and political conditions. And this can really wear down a community. But it's times like this where we cannot give up. We can't give up on our American dreams. This is the time to move beyond cynicism and to find ways to contribute to Allen Park. We can go out of our ways to talk to more of our neighbors. We can pick up litter when we walk our dogs. We can vote. We can even volunteer our time. And these are only a few examples of ways that we can stay involved, but these are all examples of actions that I've seen here in Allen Park that make me want to stay and raise my family here. And these are all reasons why that the American dream is still alive right here in Allen Park. And now this gives me the great opportunity to uh, introduce our next speaker. And uh, I actually had the opportunity to hear him speak here at uh, a Lenten Mass uh, at Cabrini. And his words uh, are one of the reasons why I'm up here speaking with all of you tonight, uh, because he had spoken and shared that he wanted us to consider taking something on rather than giving something up. And those are the words of Father Joe Malia. You'll be happy to know that the only thing I'm going to introduce is dessert. I think we really sincerely do owe a, another round of applause of thanks to the city council, to the mayor, and to Joyce Parker for their great work in relieving us of the burden of being a city on the edge of financial crisis 
to being on the brink of financial prosperity and resurgence. So thank you to our leadership for their great hard work. I also want to thank, uh, self-servingly of course, the Cabrini Booster Club who uh, took on the responsibility of again this year cooking the hot dogs and preparing all of that. The Booster Club here at Cabrini um, does more than just help out the parish. It really does serve as a community organization. Uh, they sponsor in the fall a soccer program for young kids, uh, even as young as third, three and four year olds. And they also have a summer baseball and t-ball and also a spring and you know so they're they're active all year round those programs bring to this parish to this community on the average of about 700 kids on any given weekend to play soccer or baseball so they really do an awful lot for the whole community and membership in the community in the organization isn't restricted to just us it's welcome to anybody. So if you want to uh, know more about the uh, Booster Club, the president and the vice president are over there and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to talk to you and find out how to be a member of the Booster Club. So thank you to the Boosters. When Reverend Blakey and I talked about doing this a little over a year ago um, at a restaurant, talking about how we could help the city in some small way, we came up with this idea. I really didn't think it would go beyond one year. I thought it would be a one year kind of rally kind of thing and, and then go away. I'm glad to see that it's going to become an annual thing. And uh, uh, my understanding is that it will be the third uh, Thursday of July every year. So you can put that on your calendar so that uh, you can always remember that. And we'll, of course, have hot dogs cooked by the Booster Club. <laughs> when I joke about the fact that we serve so many hot dogs here at Cabrini. I think we alone keep the hot dog business going. This really is a wonderful city. We have such wonderful events. You know, the street fair is a wonderful event to pull people together. The Cabrini Festival pulls a lot of people together. These are great ways of celebrating our community, this, this event. And I think the more we do these kinds of things, the stronger and the better we become. Um, we can't just be residents. We really have to be citizens. We have to be participants in the total life of this community in great ways, in small ways. If it is just helping to plant flowers, if it is helping your neighbor, uh, if it is volunteering at your school or church or other organizations within the city, the more we do with each other, the better we become. And the better we become, the better the area becomes, not just Allen Park, but the whole Downriver community. We really can be and should be the model for the entire Downriver community of how, what it means to be a community, of being a city, of working together. People should come to Allen Park to learn how to do this and how to become better people as a result. So I encourage you to encourage others next year to come. Invite your neighbors to come along. Even if they can't walk here, we have lots of parking here. They can drive here, they can walk and sit in the shade here and wait for us to arrive and we can share some laughs with each other and some good times with each other. We need to continue to do this, not just because it's a fun event, but because it makes us better. And the things that make us better only enhance the whole community. One of the things I'm most concerned about, obviously, is children being at a parish with a school, that's one reason I'm concerned about kids. But I look and read the paper and see all the things that are happening in the world around us. And our children need to know how to make the world better. We can't just say go off and make the world better. We have to teach them how to do that. And events like this help them to understand how to make the world better, one person at a time, one community at a time, one area at a time, one state at a time. So let's continue to do these things, if nothing else, for the sake of these kids who need to know how to make the world a better place. 
So thank you very much for coming tonight. So before we conclude, let us bow our heads and ask for God's blessing. Good and gracious God, who through your divine providence have provided all that we have and all that we are for the betterment of each other, for the building up of the kingdom, for the glory of your name. Lord, help us to take the opportunities before us, the challenges that we face, to rise above all the stumbling blocks that are placed before us. Lord, through your grace, give us the ability to be true witnesses of your loving presence in the world. Help us to make this community known far and wide, not for the riches of the earth, but for the goodness of its people. Help us, Lord, to build in this place, at this time, a place where all can come to know, love, and serve the goodness that you provide us. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you for coming. There are desserts. Enjoy yourself and have a good time tonight. Thank you all.